there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in Kaiser Redux, in which we are playing as, not the Sijuan clique, but another clique called Yunnan, led by Son Tang Jiao. But we gotta talk about the status of the clique. The decision to found the Yunnan Military Academy in 1909 gave birth to the Yunnan clique. Since the 1911 Xinhai Revolution, the province of Yunnan has been known for its elite army and loyalty to Chinese republicanism. In 1915, Yunnan alone declared the National Protection War against Yuan Shikai and toppled his empire. The victorious Yunnan then pursued an expansionist policy exerting control over its neighbors. The ephemeral Yunnan hegemony came at a price, however, losing control of many units deployed outside Yunnan. The military adventure in Sichuan was a failure and caused a major civil conflict within the Yunnan clique. General Gu Pinzhen temporarily ousted Tang Jiao from power, but Tang regrouped and returned with his loyal troops, managing to secure victory from Angu. However, since then, the Yunnan army has no longer been an integral force. Old classmates and brothers in arms rapidly become rivals. Near, during the northern expedition, Yunnan's leading warlord Tang Jiao kept a distance from the Guangzhou KMT government, while other Yunnan troops in exile led by the general Zhu Pai, rallied beyond the banner of national revolution, became the pillar of Sun Yat-sen's military force. When the northern expedition tragically ended, the desperate generals of the National Revolutionary Army decided to return to the south back to Yunnan. The attrition was heavy, and many of them ended up at the door of Guizhou, Tang's newly conquered land. Tang wanted to seize a chance and annihilate his old enemies right there, but his generals led by Long Yun. Strong arm Tang into offering sanctuary to defeat the NRA. The coexistence of the former rivals is not easy, but they knew the ru new ruler of China. The Zili clique and their German patrons will not tolerate an autonomous Yunnan, and they can only survive through cooperation, despite its formidable battle, formidable battle commanders and elite army. The lack of unified command authorities cost Yunnan dearly when it audaciously joined the fourth Zili Fengjin War. As the new year starts for the southern province, Tang Zhao's authority over the clique is far from assured. His despotism and the blatant favoritism he displays for his incompetent brother, Tang Jiu, uh, alienates many high ranking officers, including Long Yun. The submission of Tu Qing has also undermined his prestige, and he holds nothing but nominal control over the former NRA troops. With the ever mounting political tension between the officers and Yunnan, Tang's next misstep may prove to be his last. How exciting! But with the rule of Tang uh, Jiao, so we get more political power, but we lose stability and warfare, which sucks. We also have uh, Yunnan's export economy, which really is bad for us. Oh boy. And then we have oversized army, which is not good. We get more division limit, but that's not very worth very much. And German economic control over Guy Jews Tin. Hey, look, someone happens to him in the front. Very cool. But we're also doing the master of the East Continent. As another year begins, another year of humiliation starts for the Chinese Republicans as the Zili dominated status quo remains with a despicable emperor in charge. However, cracks seem to start appearing in the Imperialist Beast. Tang Jiao, the self proclaimed master of the East Continent, plans to bring Yunnan back to its full glory. But in which we could do, go with continued isolation, but I think we'll probably go with seize a chance. With Azili now fully distracted, the time has come. Oops, excuse me for this. For us to finally seize our rightful possessions in Zhenyuan, Guizhui, Guizhou, unlawfully occupied by the Hunan clique. Black Monday hits you now. With the collapse of oh, the Berlin stock market, uh, Black Monday's ripples have finally traveled around the world and reached our beloved province. While we were benefited or benefited that the German imports of their prices greatly reduced thanks to our crisis, our exports are now being taxed excessively for other transport outside of Yunnan. While we can still keep most of our industry afloat, the sudden increase in taxes and transportation costs throughout the Kunming Haifeng Railway and the slight reduction of the tin acquisition from the international market have still hurt us badly. While we can deal with the fallout, anti-German sentiment is on the rise in Yunnan, and many wonder if there's a way for our commerce to become less reliant on their intervention. Maybe this could be a chance to break free. Get more recovery. Less max factories in the state. Oh, this sucks. Oh, we, we only get 0.65 political power every single day, but the master of the East Continent. Thanks to Yunnan's valiant efforts during the War of National Protection, all of China was saved from a po power hungry tyrant. For our service, Yunnan was granted huge swaths of land in the compensation, which made a relatively isolated clique a hegemon in China. However, the German intervention and civil war, skirmishes, and border conflicts afterwards, Yunnan has been greatly weakened and reduced. And Tang Jiao knows this. While he had proclaimed that he toe the line to keep the fragile peace we have kept with the Qing for nearly a decade, in secret meetings he has begun requesting his generals to start drawing plans. While today there's no chance of breaking the Zili dominance, we can still prepare for when the town is ready to take him down. One can never be too prepared. Legacy of Northern Expedition? Probably. Despite the defeat of the National Revolutionary Army in the Northern Expedition having left Yunnan into a precarious diplomatic situation, there are many lessons we can learn by studying this conflict to improve our own army. Poland declares Republic? Cool. Also, I did not set up anything up off screen. Like, anything that happens, like, it's completely random. I have no idea what's going to happen, so. We'll see. Illusion of Qing hegemony shatters. Oh. Hurry up, and there goes those guys. Nice. And. What are you guys doing over there? Excuse me, guys. How about we do something like this for now? Just kind of hang out. Uh, who Ryu? Uh, there you go. Why not? 
Marshal Wu Pat Wu backs on Ching. Alrighty tidy. Appointing Chief of Staff wouldn't be too bad. How about this one? Ooh, more training time. We do get some more population, but we don't need more population right now. Appointing Chief of Staff. With the situation in the North deteriorating, it's finally time to start preparing the army for the large battles to come. However, with the disagreements in leadership in the past years, perhaps we must first settle who will be the new Chief of Staff of Yunnan, so that we may ensure our reforms proceed smoothly. An opportunity presents itself. With the collapse of the League of Eight Provinces, several new army cliques have banded together and formed new provincial entities. While we are friendly to some, like Guangxi and Guangdong, there are others that directly contest our sphere of influence, namely Hunan. Now that they are still recognizing or reorganizing, would be the perfect time to strike. However, our high command has opposed this idea, citing the recent economic downturn that Black Monday supposes for Yunnan is the reason why we should wait until we sort out or our internal issues before attacking. Despite the protest, Tang has a reputation for opportunism, and there's never been a clear opportunity for expansion in the recent years. We should choose our next move carefully, regardless. Alright, so this one should be done soon. Twelve days, yeah, I almost find someone first, and then we'll seize a chance. So, and it's Rogo against Hunan Clique, huh? Oh, there they are. Cool. But if you didn't know, we have a path. We can do a path guy. So, to do this, how to get the Emperor Tang Jiao and the Tang Tennis in Yunnan? So, we can play like in base, Kazarek, which I've never done before. And do not let us be cooed. Do the left tree. Try for the Hunan War, but then back down and bribe your troops in the focus. And then work with the Jones to reach a compromise in the event chain. Don't purge them. And go just go isolationist. So, we'll try the best we can. Why did I choose to do this? I don't know. I want. I didn't know what to choose at the time of this recording. I did not know which mod to choose to play. So I'm like, okay, let's go with this one. Also, we have only two research slots, which sucks. It sucks a lot. Reports of Yang Zhang Jin Zin in Yunnan, following the disappearance of Xinjiang's sage governor Yang Zhang Zin, reporters have flocked to Mengzi in Yunnan to get their scoop on this hometown. The townspeople of the Mengzi remarked that Yang's family is still well off and are refusing to give hints as to where Yang would have gone. Most reporters came to the conclusion that Yang has returned to his military outpost or post in Gansu and ended their investigation there. The intrepid few with connections in Gansu, however, have reported that Yang has not been seen in Gansu, but traces of his gold bullion have shown up in the hands of trade merchants in Yunnan. Although there's no solid proof of it yet, it appears that Yang could have either been robbed or is living incognito. A good mystery, but a general staff meeting. Ooh. Uh, mobilize the troops for us. We must move quickly if we were to take our claims in Guizhou. Yet the fools and the other cliques have refused my orders to mobilize. If we were to capitalize on this golden opportunity, we need to get our troops out of their barracks by any means necessary. Good. Famine breaks out in Sichuan. This year just keeps getting on worse. Well, at least we're not them for now. Well, seems like they're probably going to go to war very soon. Sort of like us, even though we're only training one more division. We're training two, four guys here. As you can see, we can't train anymore, but we're training the Bu Bing Shi. And we also have some army reforms we got to deal with, which kind of sucks. But we can't form the Republic of China eventually, if we... Eventually, so... China now would be really good to get. But we'll see what happens. Alright, General Staff refuses to take action. With Tang's declaration for our armies to fight Yunnan, and uh, the majority of the senior staff of the Yunnan has declared itself against such an action, and have ordered the troops to stand down and remain in their barracks, as tensions escalate, of course. Tang's closest advisors have recommended him to exercise caution and try to reach an agreement with the generals and drop the matter for the time being, even if that means allow attack allowing Hunan to slip away from her fingers. Ha Tang, however, has not received the reports well and has seemingly secluded himself in his t t home at Kun Ming for the time being, allegedly to reflect on the situation in order to come up with a solution. Let's hope he knows what he's doing. Jesus Christ, that's so bad. Tensions. Well, we'll see what happens. When completed, we get some more stuff. We didn't want political power, right? We didn't need it. Oh, actually, some divisions. Holy crap, that's so bad. Manuel assumes control. Um, we are offensive and gets go charismatic. I think that'd be okay for us to do. What do we have here? Nice. All right, mobilize the troops. With the campaign on Hunan still on the table, Tang has ordered the deployment of the troops all around Hunan to face off the Hunanese troops. However, many bases have dismissed the order and chosen to have their soldiers remain in the barracks. Well, this is a clear act of defiance on a government. A warlord without an arm is a warlord that is only bound to be overthrown considering the chaotic nature of the Chinese politics. So we need to find a way to convince them out of the barracks and to support Tang's efforts against high command. Bribe the troops, force them out. Force them out. And the general staff meeting. We must hold a meeting of the general staff and figure out how we can move forward. Our situation was tenuous enough without the infighting with Tang's recent blunder, things could grow even worse. But if you'd like to read about Purge of High Command, please go right ahead. But we're going to go ahead and do Situation Diffused. Despite the original reluctance by the governor to give up the ambitions on Zen Yuan and comp compromise with the staff, in the end we managed to contain the situation and even emerge stronger than before. But the opium payment provided Black Monday's mark on the Yunnan economy when the dis 
with the, the disobeying officers made their demands clear that they wanted their wages paid at once after months of delay. We're almost unable to pay them, however. In a lucky turn of events, Tang managed to kill two birds with a stone. Huge stockpiles of opium are mounting up on Yunnan's deposits, whereas our stockpiles of gold and silver are dwindling. In order to get rid of the opium in the way that would contribute to the economy and satisfy our soldiers, Tang has provided about 3 million tons of opium to the officers demanding for the payment of their wages. While we are skeptical this action may have convinced them, the troops are marching out of their bases and heading towards the front line. I can't believe that worked. Nice. The General Meeting A delegation led by the General Long, uh, Long Yun arrived to Kunming today, or yesterday, allegedly representing the several officer, cli officer cliques within Yunnan, who presented their compliance, or complaints, I mean, via the Yi General. As requested, the meeting with Tang Zhiyao was to take place today. The generals have set their terms clear to Tang. None of them wishes abide for an attack against Hunan, as it is almost unanimously both politically and economically disadvantageous. For the clique as a whole, and would endanger the last bastion of true republicanism to a crushing and humiliating defeat. While the deliberations have been long, Tang has finally said that they are right, we have bigger issues to focus on, they are wrong, the time is now. And then back down. Bigger fishies. And bribe your troops. And they that chain. They are right. We have bigger issues. Um, I'm not really sure. You know what? I'm going to save in front of you guys. Because if it doesn't go well for us, we can always come back to this though. Bribe your troops in the focus. Which we did that one. Do the left to try it, but then back down. Well. Just don't purge. Oh, what's happening here? Oh, we're over our division limit. Oh, that sucks. I don't like that a lot. And we can't get rid of a lot of these soldiers yet. Uh, or ever. Situation diffused. Nice. Revised the pro Provincial Constitution. In 1927, under the pressure of popular unrest, Tang passed the Provincial Constitution that reflects the Federalist agenda. It's long past due that we reformed the Constitution of Yunnan so we better reflect Tang's ideals. While Tang's original Constitution made sense at the time, there are still improvements that could be made so that Marshal Tang would have more power to serve his people. Refugees from Sichuan. Drought in the aftermath of a brutal civil war has caused terrible famine to grip Sichuan. With the government of Sichuan seemingly un being incapable of solving these problems, many have simply given up and fled the problems by the tens of thousands for the greener pastures in our lands. While they aren't the only ones that have fallen in hard times in China, many among both our population and in the government demand that we do something to help our fellow Chinese. Others believe in hardly without reason either. Given the crisis following the collapse of the league, that there's little we can do to help. Given the scale of the situation, Turning them back to Sichuan is only bound to make matters worse. Regardless of her actions, the government has filed an official request to the government of Chengdu in Chengdu that they increase their efforts to solve this crisis. We can more weekly manpower try to help out however we can. Why not? We're losing stability now? No, we're actually getting stability. Holy crap. So we get stability from this. We are not losing stability, but we're losing a lot of stuff there anyways. Alright, overall, not too bad. Could be better, but whatever. Revise the provincial constitution. Strengthen the local government is what we're going to do. And we could attract Republican intellectuals. Actually, I think that's better to do first, just because I want more daily political power. With stability to return to the province, Yunnan is swiftly becoming the beacon of Chinese Republicanism. <clears throat> With this in mind, we must make sure that our province is welcoming to Republican intellectuals and our allies, so that we may better yet continue this great experiment. We shall further the dream that, it cast, that was cast down after the Xinhai Revolution. I don't think they're mutually exclusive, right? So, let's get some better political power first. An Ching is gone. Goodbye, An Ching. I currently get 0.5 now, which kind of sucks. And then, strengthen the local government. Let's do some provincial constitution expansion. Because I do want to go with isolation eventually, if we still can. Hope we can. Or, as well, or this run won't be very unique compared to, like, just normal Kaiser Reich, so. We do have 50 army XP, which... I want to edit our divisions, but at the same time, I want to at least get through the first army reform as well. <sighs> yeah, kind of sucks, man. Can anyone give us more daily army XP? I would love... Oh, yes, we can. I might just choose that guy. That just might be the best thing to do for now. Collapse of the UBD, which is fine, whatever. Yeah, as much as I want to get all this stuff, we can get this guy, these guys later. I think I'm just going to go with this guy. It just makes more sense. Doctrine of Autonomy. It doesn't give us that many benefits. Like We get more army XP, of course, but like organization loss of moving, only 5%. Planning speed is not really super great either. It's okay. It's, don't get me wrong. I'd rather have it than not, but still. We have Albert Bodard. We've got Tang Yu... Yu. It's not great, but not bad. Um, we also have Gu Zhengding. And then we have Tang Xiaoxiang. I hope I'm saying these names right. If I'm saying these names wrong, please let me know in the comments below. But Silence to prevent. Uh, so let's strengthen local governments. The Federalist Constitution Tang passed years ago granted significant power to the local assemblies. Uh, of the Yunnan, but it could still be improved. We should authorize a revision of the executive power of the local governments and the relations with the provincial government. Alright, so we have four divisions, which is not bad. I'm just going to keep making divisions, because I just do not know how much we're going to need. 
But I don't mind cutting it down a little bit more. Because we are a little bit over our limit. Which sucks. Which really is hurting us. So, you know what? Stop making divisions then. Just except whatever we got. Refugees are gone. Oh, we don't get any more stability. That sucks. But whatever. Nice. Keep killing each other, guys. You're doing a great job killing each other. That's what we love to see. I love it. Oh, provincial constitution expansion base of Chen. Oh, look at that. Uh, Jiao Ming's reconstruction plan. The Jiangxi Fan Glu. Tang has passed a constitution for approval years ago in which a detailed system of shared autonomy or authority between the central and local government. Since China as a whole is so far from, far from being unified under a central government, this means that the Kunming and each local assembly would follow decentralized ethos, encouraging the use of trade and professional organizations as the primary organizational units in cities, while villages and counties would retain their traditional subdivisions, among many other principles, however. Back in the first implementation, Tang sidelined plenty of the points Chen made, like reducing the executive power of the president to a mere figurehead, where the executive power would be held by the assembly in charge where Tang had held to a near absolute power as governor in Yunnan, and also refused to implement the creation of legislative bodies that were on all levels, handled and organized via popular and direct voting of the people. However, with his newfound stability, Tang has said that implementing the latter part to his provincial constitution will greatly enhance the footing publicly, as people will now be able to vote for judges and court officials and will allow Tang to close ranks even further with his fellow federal supporters. Wait, but what happened to the executive power of the head of state? Doesn't matter. What matters is that we get bigger and better. Can we go to a part? Oh, we can't. Crap. Just get us some political power. Just get us more PP. We can send in the army. Continue army reform. Not yet. Send rifles to the Indochinese revolt. The violent uprising in the Indochina has given us a great chance to cripple the German giant. We could send some rifles to the revolt to help their war efforts. Eh. I don't know. I don't really care about it too much, I'll be honest. We'll see. Once we unite China, it's not going to be that bad. But the future. The time's come that we must choose our path forward. We must now decide if we're truly willing, willing to push onward for the Republican cause, or we must go and focus on our own survival and supremacy. Should we become the vanguard of federalism in China, or to isolate ourselves and remain on the sidelines of the ideological struggles that plague China? Which one shall we do? Now, like I said, I do want to go the isolationist path here. Um, I don't mind doing this again sometime, so let me know. Should I do this path sometime? Should I? Should we go with the Federalists? Because that seems like fun, but that seems like... I don't know, I've not tried it in Kaiser Reich. Is that just a normal route in Kaiserreich? Please let me know, because I do want to do the king. I do want to get a monarchy for now. I feel like Alex the Rambo, and just like, monarchy's forever. Just every campaign I do is a monarchy. Well, maybe not every, but still. Mock League is going to hopefully die, even though I played as Mongolian Khanate before, and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Very conquest-based. Local government power form. As the grip of the Zealot League grows weaker on China, Deng is sad of that. In order to further consolidate his grip on the province, a revision to the local government assemblies has to be made. While local provinces elect like their own candidates for the assemblies, this has created a weird mix of civil conflict in governments, which has drifted away from Tang's federalism and more into the traditional Republican lines of the KMT and even warlord support of assemblies like in ba Bao Shan. As such, past coherent reforms from one extreme to the other, the province has become extremely difficult, and instead of continuing to use the system, Tang has opted for replacing the heads of these assemblies with his own trusted candidates. While his move is quite obviously undemocratic, he argues that it is a temporary move as the transition to a federal system begins in order to pro further prove his commitment to the federalist ideals. He has simultaneously passed a decree in which the head of each local assembly now has the ability to handle the redistribution of land from feudal landholders to the peasants, as well as encouraging the free trade between the different assemblies, and as having, of having Kunming regulate their internal affairs. Although some detractors from the KMT have, uh, have openly criticized the move for disposing their comrades, the public results of their form has made Tang publicly more popular, and that should force them to remain largely silent, even if that move directly hinders their power in the province. A new step for, towards federalism, or another step towards authoritarianism? Does it matter? Not really, because they're all going to die in the end, because we're going to send them straight to war. Get some more daily army XP. As much as I want to get more stuff down here, the Kunhu power plant which seems not bad. Or the chemical factory? Cool. Kunming Arsenal seems pretty good. We see Chi Shui Arsenal? I'm saying this so wrong. I love artillery. Ma artillery manufacturer? Ooh, more soft attack. I like the defense, though. Generic stuff is okay. Generic stuff is okay, which makes sense. <coughs> But out of the future, we're going to go with embrace isolation. In. But we're still just going to strike out and kill people, so. The provincial governors deem the federalist cause as yet another crusade that will end with the undoing of China. Instead, it's choosing to keep the province away from conflict, at least for now. And which we're just going to go to wars with other people, too, but. I've never seen. Who's George Norris? Progressive Party. I, like I said earlier, like, I did not choose anything off screen. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, who the heck is George Norris? 11th son of the poor Ohio and farmers. All right, cool. Practicing law. Vasily Shulgin. Mr. Hatman, the future of the Yunnan With the final struggle in China growing ever closer, Tang has had the chance of deciding once and for all what the fate of the mountain of problems will be on the grand scheme of China. 
while taking support. The Federalists, in their past struggles, being a member of the Public Interest Party himself and having endorsed many of their policies, it's clear that he is not entirely willing to share the spotlight with Chen Xiaoming, and the power struggles between the two men will become inevitable. On the public side, there are mixed feelings in joining the Federalists, while the province is undoubtedly a Republican and opposed to the Qing and Zili dominance in any way or shape or form. It's also true that a huge sector of the population is unwilling to carry on battling for the rest of China. After all, most of Yunnan is inhabited by small minority groups, with not much interest in the faraway Han-centric politics that permeate Beijing and those racing towards it. As such, the choice between stepping in with the Federalists and remaining popular with the populists may not be as simple as saying it originally thought. We've bled enough for the causes, man. We've bled enough. But what are we going to choose? Oh. Cool. Toe the line. Let's get some more political power the Mountain Fortress. You know, as geography both enable us to be independent from the capital and, of course, protect us from foreign invasions. Let the situation in China solve itself, all along with the victor and prosper in the meantime. Bao Chongxi departs for Guangxi. Bao Chongxi left Yunnan earlier today with his men to join with his brother in arms, Li Zongren and Guangxi. The latter recently became the leader of the province after a power struggle with the previous clique in charge is now in charge of the KMT's right wing in Nanning. Bai Chongxi has always been loyal to him first and foremost, and his departure is expected and unchallenged. Best of luck, I suppose. Yeah, I'll be honest, I don't really care. Because I just, I do want to take him out, but I did realize it here that says, uh, toe the line, to join other factions in China, not unfortunately what we want to do, I just want to become king. I don't care about the other factions. I want us to own uh, at all. Not too many, oh, what is that called? austro Hungarian Empire, okay. Cool. Look at, oh my gosh, he is decked out. That is awesome. Carl, and Carly, I gotta play as Hungry someday, like, bro, I gotta do it. I'll get to the mountain economy as well. It's not Yunnanese economy, the Hungarian solution. Director Maksu Wai Bang contacts Yang for another movie. While many outside Yunnan are unaware, Tang Ji Yao had started, stared, or stared, starred at his movie himself back in the day, in 23. The movie itself is known as the Battle of Hongxiang and was the first movie produced in the province. While ages have passed, Yu now finds itself yet again in the spotlight of national protection. And the director of the battle, Hong Xiang, Maksu Wai Bang, has contacted Tang once again with a proposal yet to do another movie. This time will focus on the Yunnanese efforts to seize Guizhou Hu during the last uh, Zili Pengxin War of the 20s, and while the name is yet to be drafted, it's a move that could prove and could solidify Tang's legitimacy. However, it may be, require some provincial funds. Of course, they have a studio for a star. Heck yeah. We're movie stars, everybody. We are movie stars. I just want to kill Huan Cleek. Even though it looks like we should be able to take him out, but you know, you never know. Let's go through everything first, and then maybe we can justify against other people eventually. Zhao Hang Ti does not look like he's having a good time. Economic downturn as well. Subsidized military industry. He just like, bro, can I do well? Can I please live? Oh, these guys are going to die, aren't they? Well, we'll send him once. It might be too late, but we have enough guns for now. We do have three on, which is pretty good. Even I, I would like some artillery, man. Kamula Khan, it's gone. Man, yeah, maybe with that, maybe it's too late. Yeah, it's probably too late to save him. Oh well, whatever. Tell the line. If we should remain autonomous, we're still beholden to whoever is the central government of China. By allying ourselves with one of the factions, we can prevent the central government from becoming too hostile to us and take advantage of China's military chaos to secure autonomy. Well, we're going to get... Oh, Republic of Good for you. The King of Yunnan. Many within the province have begun to believe that Tang Ji Yao was not an ardent, as ardent a Republican as they were to believe initially. While Tang may deny accusations of monarchism and despotism, there is no denying that he's taken a liking to the title of the King of Yunnan. And who wouldn't? I know I would. Happy 37, everyone. Let's get some more construction speed, because we can. How do we form the Republic of China? Do we have to be a Republican? No, we're fully independent, though. A Republic of China, even though we would have a monarchy. Alright, well, whatever. I'll still take it. That's not bad. China United, get more political power, war support, and just fire world sometimes, but only for 50... Minus 50% for only 150 days? Huh. Odd. Toe the line, everybody. Toe, toe, toe that line. How much political power are getting now? 1. Oh, that's pretty good. 1.22 is pretty darn good. So I have to toe the line. The King of Yunnan. Um, what else can we grab here? Export focus, probably limited exports. We don't have a lot of exports anyway, so we're doing okay. Not great. God, I want to go to war economy, but disperse industry is nice. And get the next level, too, because we could, we're going to need a lot of guns. We're just going to straight up need a lot of things here. Not bad. And the king. King, baby, Yunnanese hegemony restored would be good to do. Claims in Siam. 
to about... Oh, look at that. Three for a year. You get more stuff. That's not too bad. But we're going to have to get a little king-like here very, very soon. Second American Civil War? Oh, we love it. We love the Second American Civil War. A king of Yunnan, though it has been hard fought, we have secured a position as rulers of Yunnan. All throughout these high, mist-covered mountains and deep gorges, the people of Yunnan know that the governor Tang Xiao is their lord. However, with his new power base now secured and his political enemies dealt with, Tang has begun to ponder on the possibilities available to him now in his newly stabilized position. Sure, his intent has long been to simply reside in these secluded hills. Lording over his fortune, smuggling his opium until he died an old and happy man, however. Something has always been nagging at Tang. Almost as if a higher power was driving him towards yet another own destiny. He had always felt that he was destined for greatness, and he always, but he always thought he had achieved it already. Here he stood as the most powerful man in Yunnan, and one of the most powerful leaders in all of China, but yet he simply felt empty, incomplete, as if it was a part of his identity was missing. Then in a flash, it all clicked and lined up for the general, whether it was opium flowing through his lungs or the alcohol cursing through his veins, or perhaps even delirium from the stress of running a warlord state. Tang had an epiphany. He was Tang Ji Yao. Yes, as he always has been, but now he could finally realize his missing piece, for he was something more. He wasn't just any Tang, he was THE Tang, heir to the centuries dead Tang dynasty, descendant of the honorable Lao Tzu and the great Gao Zhu, and the only rival ruler of China and occupant of the dragon throw by birthright. This revelation would have destroyed the minds of lesser men, but not the mind of a true-born king. Tang knew that these claims would make him mad, make him sound mad, deranged, and absolutely unfit to rule, but if he could convince enough of his adjutants, adjutants to follow along, he might just be able to pull this off. Or maybe it's just better to keep these drug-fueled re revelations to himself, lest he jeopardize everything he had worked so hard for already. What the heck was in that last hit, which seems really good. I love the consumer goods, more political power. I don't really like losing more war support, but we do get more construction speed and factory output. And get even more political power and max entrenchment, which is very strong in mountains, but I'm the one true Tang. We'll be known as the Southern Army for the reclamation of the Tang Mandate. Unlocks decisions to integrate the provinces. We get the reclaiming ta the Tang birthright and national spirit, which gives us a lot more non-core manpower. Gen generate war goal tension limit, and just fire war goal stems goes down by 75% and planning speed. I am the one true Tang, rebirth of the Tang Dynasty. The Tang Mandate shall be reclaimed. And look at that flag. That's actually really cool. But we're doing the Tibetan debacle right now. The chaos of this recent decade has led to confusion and ever-shifting borders. Among these shifting borders is ours with Tibet, where a part of Yunnan's claims has been taken by Tibet due to a large Tibetan minority there. We should endeavor to negotiate with the Tibetans about the return of our rival territory, though we might be able to leave off leaving the issue alone rather than provoking a conflict. But, you know what? What is a little conflict between friends? And they've won. See what we can do. Hopefully, you don't have too many supply issues, but we could use a little bit of a debacle here. And assert regional dominance. Oh, I kind of want to wait for that. I think I want to do uh, appoint a chief of staff next, so if you want to reread this, please go right ahead. Yeah, I think I read that one, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Cool. Appointing chief of staff sounds like a good idea. Chilean army. Um, Is Tibet in the. Oh, they are. Oh, United Provinces of China. Federal government proclaimed. Ooh, they might come for us eventually, too. The Tibetan debacle. Yunnan has had a large Tibetan ethnic group in the northwestern side of Dali for a long time. With the collapse of the Qing Empire, however, the spheres of influence of Yunnan and Tibet amongst these three these autonomous groups of Tibetans have grown foggier, and the border delimi delimiting what belongs to Tibet and what belongs to Yunnan have changed drastically over the years. However, within our territorial bounds, the departments of Dekin and du Nu Jiang have always become the southern tip of Tibet, more specifically the town of Makam. While these relatively localized territorial misunderstandings could be a good ground to start showing once again the Yunnanese dominance, many within our governments worry this is really going to be a hill worth dying on. Let Tibet keep it. Let's negotiate. It's ours. War will resolve this. I don't mind going to war with them right now, but at the same time, they're not going to be that strong. They, well, maybe they are. But we did deal with the Mongols, so... But this could be a really good opportunity for us to just grind a lot of army XP here. It's... Like, this is mountains. Uh, you know what? It's war. We're going straight to war. Can we actually win here? Because if we could actually win and move fast enough, that'd be great. Now, if we have to fight the Mongols, you know, that's going to give us a lot more territory as well. So... And if we start losing here, then we're just going to, like, let them just grind into us, so. And we're starting to lose, so that's fine. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, give us half you guys. Let them attack us. Well, if possible. And if this goes poorly, whatever. Things happen. And Ong Yoon, you love your drugs, don't you, son? One of you guys should be able to win. You should be able to win over here. And if not, then we'll pull these guys out. A matter of all friends, as the southern tank stretches out from our mountain holding in Kunming, we've begun taking in far more new faces and bodies to fill the ranks of our military's hierarchy and regiments. However, much of the old guards of our nation are Tang, 
Ji Yao's allies in the KMT. The political group he threw in before he began this ambitious pursuit to claim the mandate of heaven. These Republican journals hold great sway over the nation's military affairs, and with Tang's own hatred for Republican ideals only growing, a choice must be made. He can either grant amnesty to these old allies and friends, allowing them to serve in his military forces at ad Infinium, as long as they continue to prove their loyalty. Alternatively, the king and Yunnan could also silence these possible traitors where they now stood, averting the political potential risk of these Republican snakes stabbing a rightful emperor in the back in the future. Doing so may harm our military prowess for the time being, but we can quickly replace them with their own swelling numbers. Our resurgent dynasty has no need for Republicans to execute a lot of them. Oh boy. Although they may not be monarchists themselves, perhaps they can still be allies. Eh, hey, I'll take that one because we can. We'll see what happens. If it's a bad idea, well, we'll know very soon. That's not looking very good, so you guys are going to stop there. You guys are actually going to leave and head on over to here and hang out. Alright, so now they're, now they're definitely uh, getting more numbers up, so. But let's move our guys out. It's fine. It's fine. I don't really care. I just want to get this army XP as fast as possible, so. Now they start attacking us like crazy. That'll be nice. Now, at this point, they're probably going to be. We're going to be at war with them probably for the rest of the campaign until they, uh, either they die or we die. So, yeah. We'll see. What happens if I do this? And we get another general called Jin Han Ding. Not bad. Go to Dai Li, thank you. And then enact conscription. Original dominance is okay. I don't do that stuff. Though. The prostitute can't scandal. A local Kunming newspaper started wildfire with one of their morning reports. An unidentified neighbor to Tang's house in Kunming identified several girls being taken to the residence, seemingly against their will. While the human trade is strictly banned and penalizing Yunnan, it seems that Tang has been indulging in his desires through said trade. However, while it may be outrageous for many, we cannot allow this uh, news to continue spreading. And as such, newspaper will be intervened and persuaded to remove the news article and apologize for slander. We cannot risk our leader to lose his position in power these trying times? Absolutely not. Some things are better, hit, better hidden. You know, it's topography and geographic location is both blessed and cursed us with several economic particularities. If we wish to bring prosperity back into the province, we must look into utilizing such characteristics to our advantage. Absolutely. So these guys... Oh. Cool. Appointing a chief of staff, of course. <clears throat> As we prepare ourselves for starting the army forms, a question has been brought up in the general staff as for who will be the new chief of staff of the army. As agreed by all the general staff, it should be someone without any political connections, but to the political factions within Yunnan. And they should be generals with an offensive mindset, as Yunnan is aiming to spread its influence outside of its immediate borders. Well, also, pre candidate selected, the final decision of the general staff is to appoint some dude, his special force is not bad, Li Rentao. Oh, that's not too bad either. I like the entirely attacking defense. Lu Jung Kun. Not bad. I like the organization. And give more population infantry, Wan Meng Lin. So does this affect us later on? So let's come over here. Nope. Chaos and army, army gets. No, so it doesn't really matter too much. So yeah, it doesn't really seem like it's going to help us out much. I love artillery, but really, I think we're going to be using a lot of infantry anyways to get more attack and more population. We could use that one. So and like a phoenix from the ashes. The Tang Dynasty has once more risen from the pages of history and now greets the world of the living once more. Led by a man, a man known, one known as merely General Tang Jiao, this resurgent Tang seeks to undo much of the modern decadence that has ruined China in his eyes and instead wished to return China to a more pure and glorified time. The original Tang Dynasty was a golden age and zenith for Chinese culture. Now it's up to this general from Yunnan to try to repeat his hallowed legacy. Or this hallowed legacy. Oh, see, now they're attacking us. This is what I want to see. They're going to be attacking us ferociously. Now, hopefully we win here. If not, well, that's why I put these guys back here, too, so. Oh, wait. They got defeated immediately. Holy smoky fathers. Well, they lose a tile. Then they... No, like, it's not really good for them, but whatever. Well, that sucks. You know what? Hang out here first. There you go. Just move over there if you can. Just don't get encircled. If you hold on, eh, my bad, I didn't mean to lose that tile, but from here on out, they should be pretty not able to uh, really kill us off. But we'll see, since we're pretty much their main enemy now, so. Oh, well, things happen. We're up again, it wouldn't be bad to get either right now. Why are they leaving? Huh. Oh, uh, extractions, happy 38, everybody. Or, it's not 38 yet, but soon. Oh, we don't have good rifles. What the heck is wrong with me? i go here. We'll do the best we can. We absolutely will. Which I'm not really too worried about. We should do relatively okay. Now it's an economy, and then like a phoenix from the ashes. Now we can't go to... I'm not going to go to war with these guys yet. Um, cool. 
Yunnan East economy. Yunnan is still one of the oldest, or one of the less economically developed areas in China in terms of its overall economic power. Due to its mountainous terrain and bad communication with the outside world, Yunnan depended mostly on its agriculture and variety to sustain itself, and has overall grown especially relying on opium production and other cash crops like tobacco or sugar in order to provide for its peasants. And Kunming. The establishment of the Kunming arsenal and the textile industries in the decades prior have also began establishing a small industrial base for what is essentially a far away corner of China. This seemingly unrelated Un economic characteristics have now grown relevant again as the black money's effects have greatly destabilized the province. Economic experts like Miao Yuntai have brought up future reform plans in order to push the province out of the crisis and forward into the future. Miao Yuntai, a long-time expert on Yunnan's economy and one of the China's most renowned economists, has been one of the harshest critics of Tang Jiao's economic policies over the years, supporting an aggressive industrialization program and a complete overhaul of the agricultural production in the province. Miao has presented a reform plan for Yunnan, which is split into two, the agriculture and industrial reforms. Well, Yunnan has in the long run the, the capacity to complete both. He argues that undertaking both programs would, be, would both greatly reduce our economic capabilities as well as hindering the effectiveness of the reforms as such. He advised that whatever reforms we do first, we fully commit to the completion before moving on to the next. We must choose very carefully then. Very carefully. Actually, we should be able to go to war economy net, but we don't have enough war support. Crap. Uh, the industrial solution, uh, debt to the Qing. Well, let's go and do mining operations would not be bad. Kind of will improve. Uh, daily political power goes up. I like that a lot. Research bonus. Oh, we do get another research slot too, so. Yeah, I think I'm going to probably go that side. Oh, they joined the Entente. Or, yeah, that's weird. Promote tourism. Industrial solution first. One of the two plans detailed by Miao Yuntai. Oh, Yuntai. Explains that the current industrial output of Yunnan is unsatisfying and that could be much larger. For that, he's proposed several policies and investments that we should pass. Alright, so my goal is still to get them bait into attacking us. So, we'll see. Like a phoenix from the ashes, very nice. The Garen solution, or the industrial solution. We're gonna have to race towards that research slot. So uh, we need both of these. So yeah. <coughs> the Fudian Bank Reorganization. The Fudian Bank, founded by General Kai Yi in 1912, is a major bank in Yunnan. And since then, it has provided Yunnan with a stable supply of money and financial stable framework from which to prepare our investments. However, improvements could be made in reorganizing the bank to adapt to the new Chinese currencies and worldwide financial moves should be one of our priorities. Nice. Yeah, our economy is really bad, but... Oh, crap. A queen fit for the king! As a great king in Yunnan, Tang Ji Yao continues to search forth from Kunming and into the heart of China itself. His self-inflated ego and ambition only continues to grow. As the lands of southern Tang grow larger, so do does Deng, Tang Jiao's need to further this effect of divinity and imperial regality is he has put on, an effect that he has adopted so thoroughly that many of his closest associates no longer recognize where the old Tang stops and this new emperor personal personality starts. Regardless of their fears and concerns, Tang is further pushed on and now seeks to elevate his position and cement his burgeoning dynasty even further. And what better way to solidify a dynasty than by securing its survival with an heir? Every king needs his queen, and Tang Jiao is no different. Though his ex exhaustive harem, Tang desires a true woman of elegance to make his queen and eventually his empress. Currently, of all the women in China and beyond, Tang has set his sights on two, both delicate roses and worthy queens in their own right. The first woman to steal the affection of our king is a young actress who has taken Shanghai and the rest of China by storm, going by the name Li Li Li. Li. Uh, Tang has caught a show of hers during his, her last visit to Shanghai during this time, during his time smuggling opium. And after a brief love affair between the two, he's been obsessed with her ever since. Though she is far from way from any true noble, neither is Tang, and he's been fiercely determined to make her his bride, spending ludicrous amounts of treasury funds on lavish gifts for the young movie star. However, this May West of the East is not only the woman, not the only woman that Tang has been seeing outside his nets with his concub concubines. Far to the north of the southern Tang lies the eastern steppe and the lands of Mongolia. Tang has frequently made trips and excursions into these lands to both smuggle opium and during his time in the KMT. And on one such occasion, a beautiful noble woman made him swoon. And see, she, too, has been the recipient of a many treasure caravan or luxurious gifts from the king. A member of the Bog Tan's court and a true purple-blooded royal, Tsayan Pel would be a perfect choice for Tang to choose as his bride. Not only is she is of noble birth, but which would grant him some much-needed legitimacy and ties of true royalty. But with her position so close to the Bog Khan, the union could bear fruits of cooperation between Mongolia and Southern Tang, which is over now. Ultimately, the choice is up to the king, for he will have to live with the choice he makes more than anyone else. Already, his aides are preparing a delegation to send to the, to this choice of bribe. Ready to shower his chosen woman with gifts and pageantry as they bring her back to Kunming. Now, the only choice, choice to make would be where to go. Ogura, Urga, or Shanghai. The famous darling, darling of China's cinema, Li Li Li. And Channing Noble's woman from the steppe. I don't want the movie star, but I don't want her either. This is really awkward. So, since we're a we'll probably go with that one. In the first, I probably would have made the other choice, but whatever. Let him bait, bait him into attacking us. How long do we have this thing here for, too? A Sichuan. 
How long can we go to war with Sejuan? How strong are they? Because we have literally half our army split. And the other half of the army is split as well. Um, honestly, you might still be able to do stuff here. If it's really that bad, then I'm going to send you four. There. Go ahead. We might be actually be able to just be able to win. Just get every guy, all the guys on the line first. After the industrial solution, yeah, we'll do the bank because we don't want pee pee. A royal wedding. After much deliberation, internal debate, and soul searching through opium daydreams, the mighty king in Yunnan, Tang Ji Yao, has chosen his bride. An opulent, or opulent, lavish, and unimaginably expensive ceremony held near Taoist Temple near the Kunming Stone Forest. Alongside the Dai Di Shu waterfall near the start of the Pearl River, Tang Jiao Ye, Yao prepared himself for the big day. Adorning his most strikingly military dress and astride a stark white horse, the king trotted on the grounds observing the preparations that were underway. Lanterns and streamers filled the air, and streaked across the treetops and towering stones. Pavilions and tents had been set up across the open fields, and an altar made from dark wood and the hewn or hewn limestone of the natural formation has been carefully crafted for its use in the ceremony. Secluded from these preparations, and the smallest temple of wood and stone tucked away between the towering monoliths of rock, the beautiful Li Li Li, soon to be queen and Yunnan eventually Empress of Tang, readied herself in the chambers. Her aides and handmaidens waited on her hand and foot as they prepared her for the coming ritual. The coming procession was to be held in the traditional Chinese style of accents of the Yi traditions, common in these lands, and the starlet's own unique taste mixed in. Finalizing the touches on her outfit, and adorning a flowing scarlet red kipao. Li 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 would soon exit this small temple into the wider world of royal life. After much wa waiting and tension, uh, Tang and Li would be wed that evening, beneath the starry sky with the sun setting over the Pearl River behind them. Where the reunion, the first seeds of a true dynasty have been planted, and Tang Ji Yao was one step closer to becoming a true royal. No man could truly rule without a woman by his side. Wow, the Magnolia of Shanghai gave more political power and stability. They get into general, too. Oh. Look at that. That's pretty strong. Hey, we can do this, too. Yay, war economy. Yay. I'm gonna get if you guys can win, like I am I'm more than happy if you wanna go and win. Balance the diarchy. I'll go die now. At first I thought that was them joining someone else though. Uh, honestly, you go right there. Which is fine, I'm gonna go right there too. Like our goal right now is encirclements. Obviously it's gonna open up our border with uh, Tibet and Mongolia more, but I don't really care. Go and hang out, and then you guys come up there too. <coughs> Rose development scheme. But Miao Yun Tai requested to hire a Canadian tin experts. As yet part of the ongoing economic reforms in Yunnan, the subject of the tin trade has been brought repeatedly to Tang's attention. While there's no denying that the tin trade is extremely profitable for the province, a lack of interest and constant instability in the province have made any progress into making that endeavor into an even more profitable one grind to a halt. However, since the recent downturn has allowed Miao Yun Tai to reach a relevant political position, it's once again pointed to the book he authored back in the early 20s. Outline of the Gaizhou tin industry in it. He detailed how to strengthen our gains from the mining industry and how to reduce the hold of the German economic interest over a precious tin. As a first step of his plan, he's requested to bring Yunnan a tin mining expert from Canada in order to assist assessing the changes that will be required in order to make Yunnan's tin industry greater than ever. He's got our blessing, as he should. But, now, like most of China, our roads are horribly underdeveloped. However, unlike most of China, Yunnan has a complicated maze of mountains, mount valleys, and rivers that make road construction a simple endeavor into an odyssey. In order to get better move troops and goods, we need to expand roads, bridges, and tunnels. Belgrade Pact? Well, at least, we're by the, at least in this episode, we're actually going to go to war with other people, so that's actually kind of nice. I'm not going to lie. No matter how unsuccessful we are attacking, but whatever. Someone's got to do it, right? Someone has got to do it. Bhutan? Ooh, brother. Ooh. Well, oh, that's not good. Yeah, whatever. Who are we fighting? Sichuan is not doing very well, but they did deploy more guys. We got Chongqing, which is nice. Going into. Going into. And we got more manpower, too, which is very good. Very good. Uh, they just keep deploying more guys, don't they? Machine tools, that's fine. Um, it is getting closer to 38, but let's grab some artillery. No, let's get some better guns. Better guns first. Oh, well, there goes. Sucks to be those guys, but whatever. Well, now we're not doing great here, but whatever.
Still says we're doing okay though. Hmm. If we just like go around him and get a chain do that way, that'd be really good. Come on, can we please just take Chong Ding, Chong Ching? I want you guys to stop. You're gonna stop as well. Look at that. <coughs> At this point, you might as well just combine both armies together, but we're not, but we're just going to do this. There we go. Spread it out if you can. And development rope schemes. Um, develop the East Continent University. A large number of academics and their students fled west uh, after the northern expedition failed and Germany intervened. Now we have hundreds, if not thousands, of ac academics sitting in tents trying to teach higher learning to our best and brightest. It's necessary for the both for the future of the province and all of China that we expand upon what they have and begin to build a true university. Get some motorized as well. That'd be good. And there goes those guys killing each other. Alright, so they're going to attack us now. That's not very good for us, but whatever. Just want a little bit of Chengdu, man. Just a little bit of Chengdu. Can they actually beat us here? Hopefully not. But we'll see. And them grinding up against us is fine with me because we want as much army XP as possible to continue army reforms. As long as we hold out and do well, that's all I care about. You guys can hold. That's fine. You guys go into here. <clears throat> and we get more experience. Like that's that's what we're doing. And we, we apparently we're substance abusers as well. But don't don't mind it. Don't mind that. Wait, the Ching. Oh. Oh. Wait, why did they get called into this? What is going on? Well, that sucks. Well, we definitely bit off more than we could chew now. But oh well. But followed up with the National Southwestern Associated University. Oh, good luck. Thanks to chaos in Central and Eastern China, the exiled intellectuals have brought us a lot of room to organize new research teams to help the RD department of the Kuming Arsenal. As such, formation of the new National Southwestern Associated University that represents faculties from different and prestigious universities would allow us to better coordinate these efforts. Nice. Wait, they completely abandoned Chengdu. What the heck? All right then, we'll guess we're taking Chengdu, Cheng Yu, Cheng Me, Cheng us all together. And got the rifles, but now we have a border with the Qing Empire, which is going to be bad. The Sichuan government wishes to surrender. With a successful campaign in the southern Sichuan, it seems that the Ch Sichuanese government has finally cracked, and they decided to send over a delegation to negotiate terms of surrender. We'll have enough to bring the Baoding Department to power in Sichuan as their friends and allies. We're also just looking at annexing Sichuan and Yunnan. We'll take them all. Wait, what is this whole department thing? Establishing administration, reintegration, and concessions. We only need a government. Although we have uh, bested threats on battlefield, a set of campaigns to dismantle the support bases of our rivals, to seize their assets, and abrogate their treaty ports will be necessary to ensure our future peace. Our governments are claiming territories that belong to our former enemy. Establishing local administration is critical to our future success. Wow. Can we get who by? I mean, reform is what I want to do, but. Can we get cooed? So, now that is not very good for us, but at the same time... I need you guys to hold this line off a little bit more. And then you guys like come over here or something. Um, there's something like that, maybe. Go with Ambusher. Tianhu? Nice. Good offensive. Crap, this is really not good. Why did they join the other faction? That literally makes no sense to me. Can I actually win here? No, they're suffering from attrition. We could try it. Could be able to win, maybe. Don't worry about it. We don't have time for you to attack him like that, so. Let them attack us. I'm gonna just get to the line and just hold.
Miao Yuntai, who authorized the renovation of the tin production. With advisor, the Canadian tin expert in Tang Zhu Yao's carte blanche. Miao is authorized the purchase of an importation of modern ore washing and smelting furnaces. The modern smeltery machinery would, as he put it, remedy two key weaknesses of the Geiju and tin exports. The first one would be the tin purity. The new electric furnaces, if properly operated, could raise the purity of the Geiju, Geiju tin to international standards and provide a uniformity of tin content as necessary for direct international sales, which would allow us to bypass German economic consortiums that works as our liaison with the international market. Direct international tin sales will allow us to exclude the Guangzhou middlemen and the necessity of resmelting, thereby concentrating the profits of the tin trade in the hands of the provincial government and our local tin producers. However, with the current lack of uh, foreign economic offices to handle these direct sales, we'll be forced to utilize German inter intermediaries for the time being, although the new methods of tin purification will greatly enhance our income. Let the money flow. Nice. We can't do this. Oh crap! That's so. This is so bad. Why did we do this? Why did I do this? Just hang out in the mountains. We got encircled here. How did you move this fast up there? Just to get encircled. That literally makes no sense to me whatsoever. You son of a rock sucker. That's so stupid. Yeah, no. I think I'm going to have to redo this off screen. Off screen. Off screen just a little bit. This is this is dumb. This is incredibly stupid. How did how were they able to do this? Seriously, how? Wait, what happened here? How did they flood so fast? Yeah, I, I, I'll be honest. This is really dumb. So I'm probably going to have to fix this off screen just a little bit. But let's see how far if we can do one more focus or something like that. Maybe. Yeah, this is stupid. Uh, I'm going to have to fix this off screen because them owning going to war with us at the same time and allying with the Mongolian candidate is. Just doesn't make literally any sense to me. So, I'm going to read one more and then redo this just a little bit more. Uh, let's see. Let's do this one. Uh, hydroelectric ambition. United as a mountainous region, some of our engineers have been examining our local rivers and have come to an interesting revelation. We can construct hydroelectric dams. With such a construct in our uh, industrial arsenal, we can better extract power from nature to keep lights on and run our factories. Such a facility would be a great economic benefit to empowering our economy. And maybe industrial innovation. The Yanese early textile and light industry was revolutionary by the time of the Zenai Revolution. But it's fallen behind as new industrial production techniques came about in the West. If we should prevail against our opponents, we should take advantage of our access to the Kunming Haifeng Railway and import new tools for factories and new industrial experts to help us reorganize and improve our industry. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already, and I will see you tomorrow when this type of mess will not be as much of a problem because of the BS of the AI. Thanks for watching, though, and have a great rest of your day.